Since I quit my 9-to-5 job and started my journey of being self-employed, I have achieved many side projects in order to grow my income. From setting up my own private limited company, establishing my own tech consultancy, launching an ebook course, growing an online business to generate passive income, and the list goes on. These were all critical stepping stones that brought me to where I am today. As I was starting from a blank canvas, I knew that I couldn't rely to anyone, any employer or company to generate income. I knew I had to rely on myself and because of that, I not only needed to work hard but also needed to work smart. Even if I had a large long-term goal of reaching financial freedom, I knew I needed a good productivity system which I can rely on to achieve the smaller goals on the way towards financial freedom. As James Clear from Atomic Habits puts it, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. Today, I would like to share with you the productivity system that I use personally to accelerate all the side income projects that I've been doing and achieving them since I began this journey. My productivity system is based on the system 12 week year by Brian P. Moran and Michael Lennington, but with a bit of my personal twist. To set up today's video flow, today I'll be going through four points. What is the 12 week year system? Why I use it and why you should consider using the system as well. How to use the system, the three principles and also four steps that covers the whole system. And finally, I'll be sharing a Notion template that I use for my own side income projects as well as my business, which is totally free for you to download. Today's video is going to be a long one with tons of information. So sit back, relax, and let's focus. Let's begin. So first of all, what is the 12 week year system? If I were to summarize it in one sentence, it is a productivity system where you redefine one whole year into just 12 weeks. And within that compressed time frame, you execute maximum effort to reach your goals. When we compress one whole year in 12 weeks, it means that in one whole calendar year, we have four years that we have to go through. And by forcing ourselves to think in this new paradigm, we will be able to increase productivity tremendously and be able to do more in 12 weeks than other people do in 12 months. While most people's energy will remain really high for the first few months in a 12 month year, that level of focus and energy usually drops just after a few months. Besides, the authors of the book discovered that most businesses achieve more in the last quarter of their year rather than the first nine months of the year. Hence, if you think that a year only had 12 weeks, that compressed time frame will increase your level of urgency and that sense of urgency will really push you to really execute maximum effort to achieve your goals within just 12 weeks. As the authors say it, the great thing about having a 12 week year is that the deadline is always near enough that you never lose sight of it. Which brings us to the first advantage of the 12 week year system. It increases your focus and energy. When every passing week brings you tangibly closer to the end of your 12 week year, you'll feel this sense of urgency to get out of your asses and really just do the work. Which is why in a typical annual resolution system that you lack that sense of urgency to really push you and motivate you to really achieve your goals. After the first month of the year, our progress towards our goals really suffer and our energy levels really diminish because in our minds, we think that, oh, I still got 11 months ahead of me. I still can take time and relax. However, in the 12 week year system, the shorter period of time forces you to confront the lack of action on your end. We become very conscious of the looming deadline in front of us and hence it motivates us to really get out of our asses and do the work. The second advantage of this 12 week year system is that it puts a lot of emphasis on taking action rather than planning. Though planning our actions is important, when we have too much time on our hands, we tend to spend too much time planning. A lot of times we plan and keep spending time planning till we get tired. In the end, our projects die out in the planning phase without ever being executed. Instead, in this productivity system, planning only happens in one session once a week, and the rest of the week is time for us to execute and take action on those plans. We will get into more detail in the planning process later in this video, but just to give you guys an idea, in my five to six days working in a week, 
I only spend two to three hours planning my whole week. The third reason why I think this productivity system is so great and why I personally keep using it is because it keeps me agile on my personal goals and it allows me to keep on trying new things. When you're doing side projects, there's going to be inevitably hurdles and challenges along the way. And because of these hurdles, you might decide to slow it down or even stop because it seems like that project does not fit your skills or your circumstance or you may just find it boring after a while. However, in most cases, for any kind of skill or craft, you do need to spend a bit of time and develop a certain level of skill before you can really decide whether you like it, whether it's something that you want to pursue in the long term. Now, let's compare someone who plans their side income projects on a typical 12-month basis compared to someone who actually executes the 12-week year system. Someone who follows the regular annual calendar will only be able to discover whether he or she likes the side project after about 12 months. That means that you need to actually become a year older before you get out to properly assess whether you want to pursue something further or not. That's a lot of time to spend on something which may not end up becoming anything meaningful for yourself. However, in comparison, someone who does a 12-week year will be able to reach that point of assessment much earlier. He or she will be able to be more agile in terms of trying out new things, figuring out what actually brings meaning and fulfillment to their lives. That, in my opinion, is a very strong upside to the whole 12-week year system. In summary, the 12-week year system has less time, more focus, less planning, more action, more agile, and then more opportunity. But how do you actually use this system? Let's look into it. If you read a 12-week year book, and I highly recommend it, you'll see a more detailed and comprehensive approach to actually execute the whole 12-week year system. But in this video, I'm sharing with you guys a more personalized, summarized version that I personally use myself. And just to let you know, at the end of this video, I'll be sharing with you about how you can get a free copy of the Notion template that I use to execute the 12-week year system. And together with the free Notion template, I'll be including a step-by-step -step walkthrough video so that you guys can really implement it for your own side projects. So if you're really interested to use the system, stay tuned till the end of the video. Essentially, my 12-week year system is made up of a four-step process and three principles. Everything else in the system can be altered according to your own needs, but the four steps and three principles are non-negotiable and must be implemented for this to work. And the first step is visioning. This is done on day zero at the beginning of your 12-week year. This is a paramount step that we all need to take whenever we begin any large endeavor. And there are two main reasons why visioning is so important. The first reason is to prepare your mentality. Visioning rewires your brain so that you're prepared to go towards an uphill battle. Without a compelling vision, you will discover soon enough that there is no need to go towards this pain of change. But with visioning in place, your brain will be ready to go through the challenges and hurdles for you to execute at high performing levels. The second reason we do visioning is so that we can chart our path from having a long-term vision to a very specific short-term goal that we can achieve in 12 weeks. And we achieve this by asking ourselves three questions. First, the long-term vision. At the end of the day, who do we really want to become? The second question that we ask ourselves, and this is to discover our mid-term, long-term goal in three years' time. Where do you want to be? And the short-term goal, which is going to be achieved in 12 weeks, is what do you want to achieve? And we have to bear in mind that whenever we are trying to chart ourselves from the long-term vision to the specific 12-week goal, all these things need to be aligned and in parallel. To give you my own example, when I first started this whole journey, my long-term vision was to be, I wanted to be someone who is financially independent and free. And because of that, I had in mind thinking about it that in three years time, I wanted to be able to run my own business that is profitable, but also allow me to travel freely. That's something that I knew that I wanted to achieve in three years time. Now, bearing that in mind, and then considering my own circumstances, my skills, what I want to do, what I think is actually viable, I thought to myself that, okay, 
maybe going to doing an online business or setting up a website would be a direction I want to take. So in 12 weeks time, I thought to myself that, okay, I want to set up an online website to showcase my tech consultancy services and sign up with one client. For a few reasons that it was related to something that I did in the past, it was something that I knew would be able to unlock me running a business which was profitable and allow me to travel freely because it was going to be online. The 12 week and 3 year goal, that's still a huge gap but I knew I was moving in the right direction. So I knew, okay, let's try and aim for this 12 week year goal. Let's set up a website, an online business related to consultancy and let's just try to get one client first in 12 weeks. Let's really just focus our efforts on that. So similarly, when you're trying to do this, think of your vision and then draw up a three-year goal, which is going to be a long-term goal. And then in the same direction, what's going to be a short-term goal, which seems realistic and achievable for you, which is going to bring you one step closer towards your long-term vision. Next is step number two, which is planning. And there's only one objective towards step number two. And that is to list out your keystone actions which are essential to reach your 12-week goal. And with it, there are three things that we need to keep in mind when we're listing out our keystone actions. Number one is only critical actions. Remember, you only have 12 weeks to achieve your goals. Time is precious and because of that, you have no time to dilly and dally and do things which are not critical for you to really achieve your 12-week goal. So when you're listing out your actions, remember to keep it lean and cut off the fat. Only list out critical actions. Number two is keep it short. Have you ever started a project and you were thinking about how to achieve it and you kept planning and planning, listing out things what to do and just kept planning and planning. Finally, you got tired of it. Planning fatigue is real, guys. You can get tired of planning. Because of that, keep it short. I only take about one hour really to plan out all my actions for the coming week. Remember, you're going to have another planning session in the next week where you can then relook into your actions again and plan again. What is important is to execute and take action. So set a time for planning, focus during that time, brainstorm in terms of what are the best actions for you to take in the coming week and then get over it. Once planning is done, it is done. Trust your plan. And the third thing which is important when you're planning is that there are no excuses after. And this is related to my first principle, which is 100% commitment and accountability. When you're listing out your critical actions for the coming week, it is very easy for us to just list out a lot of actions thinking, okay, this is all important. But in the middle of the week, we then start getting tired, giving excuses to ourselves, and then by the end of the week, we then start striking off certain actions because we think, oh, it's not as important as I thought it was. That mentality of devaluing the actions that you first thought was important and then slowly ignoring it, that's a very bad mentality to have. Cast it away. If you plan to do something, then do it. Have 100% commitment when you plan and 100% accountability when you execute throughout the week. Because at the end of the day, if you fail to execute your own plan, then you really only have yourself to blame. So if you plan it, do it. No excuses after. The next step is taking action. And there's not really much to say about this apart from get your shit done. Trust what plan you've already made before that. Whatever that you've planned to do, all the critical actions that you've listed out, trust it and execute it with 100% commitment and with your utmost effort for the week. I find it very useful to have the actions list in front of me every day when I'm starting my work week so that I can get the shit done. And out of everything in the 12 week year system, this is possibly the most important one. You can have a great vision and remarkable planning, but what separates the winners from the losers is action. As one ancient Roman philosopher puts it, the fall of dropping water wears away the stone. Consistent action on the critical tasks that you need to achieve your goal is the key to getting what you want in life. But another important point about action relates to my second principle, which is focus on action, not results. 
What I mean here is that through your journey of trying to achieve your 12-week goal, the goal itself can actually become a major distraction for you. For example, take the case of becoming a YouTuber. One of the goals that a lot of YouTubers have is to get to 1,000 subscribers because that's the point where they can start monetizing their channels and putting up ads on their videos. Because of that, it is very easy for a new YouTuber to fixate on the number of new subscribers they get every time they release a video. They worry about the number of subscribers and end up wasting a lot of energy being anxious about the results. You do not want to do that. Instead, focus on your actions. Keep your energy focused on what you can actually do and not the results which are the outcome of your actions. Trust that if you really execute the critical actions that you've planned out, the results will come in due time. Do not waste any of your energy being anxious about whether you'll actually achieve the results or not. Rather, focus that energy instead on really trying executing those critical actions. For the case of the YouTuber, instead of being worried about the number of subscribers they have, instead they should be focusing on really creating good videos. And I believe in due time with sincere hard work and effort, the results will come. Step four is reflection. And reflection is conducted as a session at the end of every week, just before your planning session. For myself, I personally work from Monday to Saturday, so my reflection sessions are usually done on Saturday night, just before I do my planning sessions too. And let me begin by saying, please, please, please do not skip this step. A lot of people underestimate the importance of the reflection step. See, reflection is very important because it's a weekly introspective session for you to make sure that you're moving your momentum in the right direction. As you're trying to build towards your 12-week goals, trying to build up your side income projects, you will over time with your own efforts and hard work, build momentum. And this momentum is a positive energy that you want to ride towards your goals. However, you will inevitably face challenges, internal ones and external ones. And these challenges pose a threat in terms of diverting your momentum in a direction that you actually do not want to take it towards. Because of that, the reflection session is very important to make sure that you steer your momentum focused towards the direction of your 12-week goal. It is a time where you actually tackle your challenges, identify them, and address them as activities, as tasks in the coming week. So during the weekly reflection session, there are two things that we need to do. The first thing is quantitative scoring. Here we look back at the list of actions that we've planned out for the previous week. And then we look at how many of those actions did we complete compared to how many was initially planned. Based on that ratio, we then calculate our execution score. Since all our actions are critical and also committed, it means that the execution score shows how much meaningful work did we actually do in the past week. And the authors say, based on their research and study, that if you are able to maintain an average of 85% for your execution score, then it is very likely that you'll achieve your 12-week goal. The second thing that you want to do during the reflection session is qualitative review. And what I mean by this is we want to identify four things. The first thing we want to identify is if there are any victories, successes, or good news that came about in the past week. This is so that we acknowledge any good progress that we've made and use that positive energy for the coming week. Second, we want to identify any failures or breakdowns that we had. Yes, we need to be accountable to ourselves in the system, but what's more important is that we identify those failures and breakdown points so that we can learn from them and then plan to take actions to resolve them in the coming week. Some of the common failures which I faced in my own experience were things like, did I list out too many actions? Did I overestimate my energy levels? Were there any complicated actions where it was above my skill level, which meant that I first needed to develop the skills or inquire to an expert before I can actually execute them. The third thing in the qualitative review is a stress check. We need to acknowledge whether the past week has been too stressful for us in terms of what we planned for ourselves. 
it is still very important for us to make sure that we don't burn out before the end of the 12 weeks. If not, then everything is lost. On the flip side, the stress check is also to see whether has the past week been too stress-free? Could we be doing more? Could we be adding more to ourselves so that we can achieve even beyond what we had first set out to? Finally, after identifying all our victories, our failure points, and also our stress levels, we then compile everything and optimize it for the plan in the coming week. As a summary, if you look at my 12 week here, it is actually made up of a simple process. At the very beginning, we conduct visioning where we identify our long-term goals and the specific 12 week year goal. Then, at the start of the week, we plan out all our critical actions that we need to complete for the coming week. Based on our plans, we then spend the rest of the week focusing on executing and completing those critical actions. At the end of the week, we reflect quantitatively and qualitatively to keep up the momentum and the positive energy for the coming weeks. We then rinse and repeat planning, action, reflection every week for 12 weeks. This four-step process is supported by three principles. Number one is for anything that we plan to do, we need to be 100% committed and accountable to them. Number two, while on our journey, don't be distracted by the results. Focus on the actions. And the final principle is something that I learned from the Japanese. And it is called Isho Kenmei. Isho Kenmei is a Japanese expression which means to do something with all my heart and soul. It means to put in sincerity and mindfulness in every ounce of effort that you output. You may say, hey, isn't this just a bit too much for side income projects? I say no, you're mistaken. How many times have you started something and just end up giving up halfway through? How many times have you dreamt of doing something meaningful, developing a certain skill, or creating something for yourself, but those dreams just remain dreams? I say pick up the hammer and strike it while it's hot. But just like the Japanese artisan, with every strike of the hammer, put your heart and soul into it. When you start to do a 12-week year project, do it with sincerity and mindfulness. With Isho Kenmi, with your heart and soul. Start it, do it, finish it. If you found value from this video, please do hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help me out. Now, as mentioned, for me to implement my 12-week year system, I use a tool called Notion. Notion is a free tool online, which I use to lay out my 12-week year plans, track my actions, and take notes for my reflections. Notion is a really great tool, and I've been using it for about one and a half years now, and I really see an increase in productivity since I started using it. So I've created a free public Notion template, which has my 12-week year system incorporated in it. This is the same template that I use for my businesses and also personal side projects. So this is something that I really want to share with you guys so that you guys can also use and then achieve your own goals and implement your own 12-week year systems. The Notion template is totally free for you to copy and use. And I'm also going to include a walkthrough step-by-step -step video with the Notion template so that you guys can then really understand in terms of how I use it from a tool usage point of view. So if you guys are interested and would like to have a copy and use it, the link towards the Notion template is in the description below. For anyone who's watched till the end of this long video, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys found value from this. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do subscribe. I'm also on Instagram at pfchallenger. If you guys do have any questions specifically about the Notion template or about the whole concept of the 12-week year system, please leave a comment below or you guys can also DM me on Instagram. I'll be more than happy to take your questions and answer them and help you guys in any way that I can. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.